Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from Virident. We have Shreeder Subramanian. Shreeder is the VP of Product Marketing at the company. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Rich, and it's a pleasure being here on the show with you. Well, great. You know, we're coming up on uh, supercomputing here, and you guys got some new announcements to tell us about. So I brought up your slides. Uh, do you want to just go through those? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll go through the slides. But before that, I would like to mention that we are all excited about being in uh, Supercomputing 11. And uh, we look forward to meeting uh, quite a few players from the high-performance computing space. Let me just now uh, give you a brief introduction to Virident as a company and, and what is it that we do and the applicability to the overall HPC community. So, Rich, I'm on slide number two. Uh, talking about uh, the uh, Virident Corporate Overview. Virident, as a company, was founded in 2006. The founders came from uh, pretty high-profile companies in the Bay Area, companies such as Google, Intel, SGI, uh, and Sun Microsystems. And when the company was founded in 2006, the main mission, as it is today, is to um, improve the overall efficiency of the data center uh, infrastructure space. Now, as um, um, I mean, one can see and one can witness today, the data centers across the board, be it Web 2.0 companies, enterprises, or HPC, is growing pretty dramatically. And a lot of the growth uh, can actually be attributed uh, to the growth in data and the access to the data. And primarily because of the big discrepancy between the performance of the CPU subsystem and the uh, I.O. subsystem, uh, this growth in data and access to the data has created uh, significant inefficiencies in the overall infrastructure. Uh, as we all know, CPUs are quite underutilized, so is the uh, storage subsystem. And, and the goal of the company and the mission of the company was to bring about a better balance between the I.O. performance and the CPU performance. And uh, what the company did initially was to focus on NorFlash, and we came out with a product that actually was built on NorFlash that fit into the DIMM slots uh, within the servers and gave applications the, uh, the view of a much uh, ex expanded footprint of memory that was persistent. Now, we had developed this product, and uh, around 2008, uh, unfortunately, uh, one of the key suppliers, and, and, and actually it was the sole supplier of NorFlash to Virident, filed for bankruptcy. And, and what Virident did at that point was to take a lot of the IP that we had developed on NorFlash and moved it to Nord NAND Flash. And this move from NorFlash to NAND Flash actually gave us a significant advantage in terms of building a storage uh, subsystem that was extremely efficient and high performance, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, going back to the company description, the company is actually very well funded. Uh, uh, we uh, closed our Series B financing uh, towards the end of last year, led by Sequoia Capital, Globespan, and uh, Artiman Ventures. And we are very excited today uh, to say that uh, we also closed our Series C funding. Um, all the leading leaders. Uh, that already participated in Virident are also participating in this round of funding. But the interesting part about this round of funding is that we have also um, uh, uh, built out a team of uh, strategic uh, investors in the data center space. So we have picked vendors who contribute quite a bit to the data center market. Um, uh, this includes uh, uh, players such as Intel Capital, Cisco, and an unnamed vendor that is pretty dominant in the data center market. From the company perspective, we had about 85 people. Uh, and uh, I mean, we are set up in Milpitas and as well as Bangalore, India. We introduced our first generation product towards the end of last year. Where, uh, and this was a PCIe uh, SSD based on SLC NAND flash. And it has been very successful in the marketplace. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of customers worldwide. We have 40 plus customers worldwide. And we have presence in, in US as well as Asia Pacific. In terms of the vertical industries, uh, we are focused on Web 2.0, uh, high performance computing, uh, financial services, manufacturing, et cetera. 
I mean, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, there are two uh, key pieces of uh, information that I'd like to talk to you about. The first one is the uh, CDC funding uh, with uh, key strategic investors. And the second one is uh, we are expanding our product portfolio and we are introducing our next generation product with MLC Flash. Now, if you look at the overall flash market, which I mean, we actually are quite different from the other vendors in the marketplace. Um, if you go over to slide number eight, I would actually categorize the, uh, the, the, the flash vendors or the PCIe SSD vendors into two broad camps. One, uh, as you see to the left-hand side, are vendors who have pretty much taken SAS SATA SSDs uh, taken the casing out of it, created a PCIe form factor, and pretty much uh, slapped a, a couple of controllers on, on top of it and built out a PCIe SSD product. It, it, this actually, I mean, uh, it, it, it's a pretty good way in order to get out to the market pretty quickly, but unfortunately it has some significant drawbacks, primarily because of the stack that you have to go through and the unnecessary overhead. There is a significant impact on the overall performance and the latency. Where Viridin fits in is on the right-hand side, as you can see, it's more of a storage class memory where we deliver the performance that is closer and uh, to the memory subsystem in terms of low latencies and predictable performance. And, uh, and also we deliver uh, storage class capacity and persistence. Okay, so we fit in, in into the right-hand side bucket. Uh, we have a PCIe SSD product um, whereby we cut through a bunch of the stack uh, and the unnecessary overhead and we give direct access to the data on the flash medium. And what this enables us to do is to deliver extremely steady, sustained performance and a very low latency that is um, demanded by the applications that are truly I.O. sensitive. So aside from cutting through the stack and giving a direct access to the data on the PCIe SSD, we have designed this product uh, keeping in mind uh, three key attributes that are truly needed for the applications that are uh, I.O. bound and I.O. intensive. The first one is what we call as truly unconditional performance or sustained performance. And the sustained performance and the unconditional performance that the Veridin FlashMax devices deliver happens to be a across uh, three main vectors. The first one is across a wide range of applications and a variety of uh, workloads. Uh, as you can imagine, every enterprise has a range of applications that they truly would like to deploy these devices for. Um, so we have ensured that the performance is consistent and it is high across these range of applications. The second vector where we truly differentiate from our competition is that uh, the performance is pretty steady and consistent over time. So the day one versus the day 1000 experience on this particular product, uh, one would experience very minimal variation. And the third one is, I mean, as one can imagine, the data set sizes within the enterprise is actually growing pretty rapidly. So uh, once a device is deployed, customers would truly like to utilize it to full capacity. So we have ensured that the device delivers pretty uh, consistent, steady performance over various ranges of capacity utilization. And that is a big advantage that Viridin delivers over uh, competing products. The second attribute that we have designed this particular product um, is the fact that this is a low profile device. It is a half height, half length device. And the reason we, we picked this particular form factor is so that it can be deployed across a wide range of servers. And uh, this is what we call as a universal form factor. But, but the more interesting thing about the Viridin FlashMax devices is that in this low profile form factor, we offer the highest capacity and the highest uh, density in the industry. And in this, uh, so just to give you an example, on the MLC device that we will be introducing in a couple of days, 
the capacity that we support is 1.4 terabytes in a low profile form factor. And on the SLC, it is 800 gigabytes of usable capacity in the low profile form factor. The 1.4 terabytes, by the way, what I mentioned was also usable capacity. The third uh, attribute of the uh, Viridian FlashMax uh, device is that we have built this with enterprise class reliability in mind in addition to the standard ECC and uh, capabilities that uh, many of the flash vendors provide. We also have a unique feature on the device called Flash Aware RAID. Uh, so this is where we have taken the standard RAID, made that flash aware, and ensured that it works very well with the physics of flash, and created RAID groups uh, across the NAND modules on the device. What this does is, in the event of any failure, uh, it ensures that the data availability to the end user is not impacted in any way. In other words, even if a NAND die or a chip fails, the data availability continues uh, as is uh, to the end user. And um, uh, w w once a NAND module is replaced, the RAID rebuild happens in the background. So, so just to reiterate, uh, the, the three uh, main differentiators for the Veridon FlashMax device uh, compared to the, the leading PCIe SSD competitors out there in the marketplace are unconditional performance, very high capacities in a low profile form factor, and the focus on enterprise class reliability. Yeah, so that was really interesting. I, I'm I'm really curious about the RAID thing for the enterprise, right? Is that, uh, is that a form of software RAID or is that part of the... Uh, the device itself. This is actually a hardware RAID that we have built onto the device itself. So uh, what that does is, uh, I mean, it actually decreases the latency. It, it does not impact any of the performance, and you get the enterprise class reliability without compromising either latency or performance. So it's it's striping um, data across the various. Um, uh, memory elements in the flash. Yeah, so so this is actually uh, doing RAID across the NAND modules on a, a single PCIe as a, I mean, uh, a storage class memory device. I guess my question is, Schreeder, it is as the density goes up on these devices, does does flash become um, um, untested in, in that kind of high density? Well. Um, so, so that's a very interesting question, Rich. Uh, these flash devices are pretty well tested. They are well qualified by the uh, flash vendors. But what you're asking is actually a very pertinent question, in that as the densities increase and as we go down uh, to lower geometries uh, uh, on flash, uh, the, the, the endurance and uh, the, the reliability characteristics of the flash actually go down. But what we have done at Verident on the FlashMax device is to put in all the hooks in the firmware, in the hardware, as well as in the driver in order to ensure that we deliver the same level of uh, endurance and reliability to the end user. So, Shreeder, you guys have been out there with these devices for a while. What kind of reactions are you getting from users that are, you know, uh, you know seeing performance change? What, what are they telling you? So, so far, I mean, uh, we have actually had have um, had the SLC devices deployed in production in, in as I mentioned earlier, 40 plus customer sites, and on the MLC device, um, we we have quite a few customers that have deployed uh, these products in the in the uh, production environment. The feedback has been very positive, in that uh, they are seeing very good performance. They are seeing consistent, sustained performance as uh, they would truly like to expect and, and that they would like to see from such an enterprise class device. They are seeing that and customers are truly happy with the kind of performance that we deliver. So Shreeder, I'm kind of curious about how seamlessly you can integrate these uh, SSD devices into a workflow. Uh, do you have to rewrite a lot of code? How does that work? I just want to give a quick answer to that particular question that, um, in fact, these devices are extremely easy to use. 
uh, all you do is you just plug it in into the uh, server into a compatible PCIe slot. You load the driver, and uh, the device appears as a block device and the applic as a standard block device, and the applications can uh, start using the device. Uh, in fact, many of our customers have commented that from start to finish and in terms of applications leveraging this particular device, it has taken about half an hour. That's about it. Wow. Including the boot time and everything else. That's terrific. Well, Shreeder, I'd like to uh, thank you once again for coming on the show today. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.